Hi, y'all. I'll be responding to a video uploaded by Concordance, uh, brought to my attention by an alert patron of mine, and it is titled something like, Why Do Cops Shoot Unarmed Black Men? A link to it below. If you uh, go read the description, you'll find that an, an extra word has been added, which adds a degree of emphasis to the question, why does it keep happening? Why do cops keep shooting unarmed black men? Notice that people don't speak about it uh, like that with respect to unarmed white men who are shot unarmed Asian men who are shot, unarmed uh, Latino men who are shot, though they do keep getting shot by the cops. Now, I may be overreading this emphasis, this emphasis, this extra word. It might just be uh, carelessly inserted, but I don't think so. So, Concordance, let's start at the end of your video where you bring up Philando Castile. Notably, not an unarmed black man who was shot. He was, in fact, armed. So, I, it's a little curious you bring it up. Now, I to give you credit where it's due, you are saying that uh, it could be a multitude of factors, of which one is uh, some kind of implicit bias, uh, some kind of subtle subconscious racism, uh, which seems to be the claim that needs to be supported no matter by what means, no matter what mental gymnastics are required to support it, and I'll support that claim in a little bit. So your description of the Philando Castile shooting is that uh, he was calmly reaching for his ID when he was shot. Curiously enough, um, that claim that he was reaching for his ID is not uh, shorn up by the forensic evidence. They cannot actually say where the ID was because it was described in more than one location by different witnesses at the hospital who actually did the undressing of uh, Philando Castile when he was brought in to the emergency room. So there is, uh, the state's own expert witness says that the forensic evidence does not, uh, cannot show that that is so. There, of the salient facts, there is one that is uncontroverted, though, that the firearm was exactly where the police officer said that the firearm was, which is where the officer claims that Philando Castile was actually reaching. I notice that you don't mention that. You don't mention the fact that he was reaching for whatever he was reaching for despite being commanded by the police officer to stop doing that action. I notice that you further don't mention the fact that Philando Castile used his shoulder to obscure the view of the police officer while he was doing uh, this reaching towards the pocket, which may or may not have contained the ID, but which did in fact contain the firearm. Now, there are omissions that are going to be made when you're restating various uh, scenarios that have happened, but I can't help but notice that people who want to shore up the claim that Implicit bias, no matter what else is true, just has to be lurking there somewhere. Always manage to omit the facts which would not be congenial to that particular claim. So you put up this, um, this little uh, chart showing true positive, false positive, true negative, false negative. And uh, that chart of yours, for those, everyone else, uh, go watch it. I don't want to explain it too much. But it's about whether or not a person has a gun. That there is some kind of one-to-one -one correspondence between has a gun, is a threat, doesn't have a gun, isn't a threat. This is a false assumption. Now, shortly after that, you mentioned game theory. And just for everyone's benefit here, whenever someone mentions game theory, with, and they want to talk about real events that happen between real people and real, everyday, ordinary life, um, just please be aware that you are probably about to be misled. At the very least, you should be on your guard. Now, Concordance does note, quite properly, that... Uh, it needs modification because it assumes that there are perfect actors which humans are not. That's the understatement of, of the year. Since we're talking about crime, I'll just point out two things. Um, in, in game theory, if you want to uh, talk about something that language we use in everyday life, credible and non-credible threats, in the real world of actual people, a credible threat means that the person who has made the threat, the, who has proposed a course of action, that's not uh, congenial to your goals, has the means and the will to carry it out. A non-credible threat is where either he is lacking the will or is lacking the ability. In game theory, that's not what it means. It means um, a credible threat is one that a rational actor uh, would or could take, and a non-credible threat is an action that a rational person would not take. So. A suicide bomber, because, uh, or someone who is suicidal in some other way, because they're not rational actors, are modified out of the models. They are refined away. And it, it, anyway, they're for technical reasons. 
but it's just one of the goals of pure mathematics. You want to find simplicity and complexity. Um, you want elegant mathematics. And the real world, if it is anything, it is inelegant. And it is not particularly friendly to uh, models. And as Sean Carroll pointed out in a debate, I think, with William Lane Craig, you can always escape a model. You can always evade the model by violating its assumptions. And the real world is very good at violating all the assumptions uh, of game theory. So unless you have very contrived circumstances, or you have a lot of control over the parameters that you can constrain, um, game theory really doesn't have much purchase in your everyday, ordinary life, even less so than it's going to have when you're dealing with the criminal element, particularly ones who aren't rational actors, which happens to describe a large proportion of uh, criminals. Anyway, <clears throat> the problem with uh, your threat analysis is that it is counterfactual. It, it, it ignores substantial facts and uh, has some assumptions which are violated by the actual facts on the ground, to use the vernacular. For example, 10% of police officers, a little under 10%, is about 8% of police officers who are shot to death uh, each year, on average, are killed by their own firearms from suspects who were, in fact, unarmed. So on your matrix, they will have correctly determined that the person doesn't have a gun, which you, your model says implies that the person is therefore not a threat. It's just false. So the model is completely escaped because reality violates the assumptions of your model. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> now on to the, the uh, central focus of um, the turd that you have polished. It is a study which purports to say something about why police officers uh, shoot unarmed black men. Curiously, in none of these uh, cases where people want to talk about it, or they, when they want to push the narrative that it's racism that is afoot, among other factors, of course, because you want to sound reasonable and moderate, so you'll say, I'm sure there are other factors, but really, below it, somewhere in there, just has to be racism. They don't bother to entertain what is it that the person who is shot may be doing that is bringing about their getting shot. And how, is, how does this behavior, in respect to proper commands or whatever, uh, differ between races? For some reason, they don't want to talk about that, but for what we're sure about is that racism on the part of the cops is afoot. So, the study is, um, I'm going to be very friendly to this study, and I'm going to assume the counterfactual state of affairs that the uh, study was perfectly done. There are no flaws in the study. The uh, authors, the people who conducted the experiment, are above board. They did everything right. They're really trying to get to the truth of it. So what they did is they took a group of people, a sample, to approximate a, a population. So we'll say uh, group A was taken to be representative of population A. But the problem arises in that they are trying to say that population A models population B. This is an ecological fallacy. It is an impermissible uh, uh, statistical step. Uh, concordance, as a working scientist, has to know that you cannot study a population, A, that's unrelated to population B and draw inferences about population B. He has to know this is impermissible. He should know that this is impermissible. This is a statistical cousin of the, log the formal logical fallacies, the fallacy of division and fallacy of composition. You simply may not do this. It is strictly prohibited. So anyway, but let's assume that population A, whatever is true about that in respect of what we're studying, is in fact true about population B in respect of the thing that we are studying. It has an implication, which if true is very troubling, and fortunately there's no reason or whatever to think that it's true, and there are very good reasons to to know that it is actually false. But the, the claim that, that uh, concordance is making implies it logically requires one to draw the following conclusion, uh, that whatever is true about untrained college students who have no experience or practice whatever in making these kinds of decisions, uh, that they will behave exactly the same way as trained police officers who have a lot of experience in making these types of decisions. In other words, you have to infer uh, that training makes absolutely no difference at all. And therefore, concordance is stuck in the precarious position of having to argue 
that actually what we really should do is stop training police officers because we will get exactly the same outcome as we would get if we randomly select people from colleges that we would expect to get if we non-randomly select people based on their ability and their skill and then train them and only let through onto the force those who satisfy to the minimum standard all of the training requirements. <clears throat> uh, so you would have to believe something like uh, fighting soldiers who have been fighting for a year is just like fighting soldiers who are completely untrained. That, that training does not make any difference at all. I realize that's a slightly askew example, and so I should probably edit it out, but since I don't edit these, it'll stay in. Uh, sue me. Um, <clears throat> now, in response to this ecological fallacy that uh, Concordance is waving around as though he's found a golden nugget of truth somewhere, someone pointed out that there is actually a, a link that he provided where they actually do test police officers, and this study uh, purports to show that police officers uh, take about three times longer in deciding whether or not to shoot when the uh, suspect is black. So that's interesting. In the study of the the college students, it should be noted, uh, I'm going to stop assuming, I'm going to stop pretending that the people who did the study were remotely honest or that it was remotely well done. Uh, they cherry-picked a, a sample, uh, intentionally excluded from the sample any black people, um, they, <laughs> it's 24 women and 7 men, so what I'm guessing is they just went to their department and they shopped around for some people, they offered them uh, class credit for participating in it. Uh, by the way, on excluding the black people, it's kind of a weird way to run an experiment when you're wanting to accuse other people of uh, racism to go ahead and say black people can't be part of our study, but that's just a, a wry observation of mine. Now, the reason that they don't want black people in there is because if, black people, if untrained black people behave the same way as untrained uh, non-black women operate, if they behave the same way, then that's going to shoot in the foot the narrative that what's lurking is racism against black people. Um, it ha it would have to, they would have to consider some extra variable in their model, which they don't want to consider. And in fact, they are hell-bent on proving that what is really happening is this uh, supposedly extant implicit racism. And they do it by priming. So uh, you put up a face of a black person and then either a weapon or a tool and uh, people more readily identify the weapon when it's with the black face and not. And then if you add time constraints to it where they have to make quick decisions, they will mistake the tool for the weapon more frequently if the face that they're primed with is a black face. That's, that's the claim. <clears throat> Whereas in policeman school, you actually... Uh, you, you do the crawl, walk, run kind of uh, kind of learning. You begin with just getting the technique down, shoot, you know, getting you know, hitting the target, and then you add uh, slowly add more and more stressors to that situation, and then you uh, start to constrain the time that officers have to make the decision. In other words, it's almost like police trainers are sufficiently bright to know that untrained people won't do as well on this, and therefore what we need to do to get good officers is to train them on how to react both correctly, as often as is possible, and as quickly as is prudent. So if you think about like a boxer or anybody who competes in martial arts, their reflexes are faster than the average Joe on the street. The reason for this is that training actually does matter. You can dramatically change your native limitations by working very hard in the way of overcoming them. Um, and it is borne out by looking at real officers who are really tested in shoot-no-shoot situations who um, do better than these college women do. Now, the, the sample is not even representative of the general population, let alone of the police. I mean, it's predominantly women. There are no black people. As you may have noticed, law enforcement is predominantly male, and they do actually let black people into law enforcement these days. Now, Concordance, I really don't... W I, I really want to be as charitable as I can be, but you are a practicing scientist. There is... I want to say there's no possible way that you can look at a study like this, a turd like this, and try to polish it and parade it around as though you have struck gold. But I see this happen so frequently in the scientific community that you give a pass to social so-called sciences where they, uh, they trot out shit study after shit study after shit study after shit study and uh, the natural scientists sit around and just go, oh, Fabu, Marvy, Wonderful God, please join us in our elite 
organizations because you guys are really the bee's knees. You're doing great work. It's complete shit. This study is not worth the paper that it was printed on. Certainly not worth whatever money went in to conducting the so-called study. It, it, it is just completely useless. Why on this earth would you try to trot that out to support this claim other than you were victim of uh, some kind of confirmation bias? Please explain that. All right, have a great day.